Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg said yesterday that he would call on major railroads to improve safety after the train derailment that occurred in East Palestine, Ohio, on February 3rd, a train operated by Norfolk Southern. In a letter to Norfolk Southern, Chief Executive Alan Shaw, Buttigieg said he would also urge Congress to raise the cap on fines against railroads for violating safety regulations, quote, to ensure their deterrent effect is commensurate with the economic proportions of today's large railroad companies. That's according to Reuters. Norfolk Southern said Sunday it received a copy of the letter from the secretary and are reviewing. Buttigieg also had this to say. While this uh, horrible situation ha has gotten a particularly high amount of attention, there are roughly 1,000 cases a year of a train derailing. Interesting comeback there. You know, you might think this one's really bad, but guess what? We're asleep at the wheel. A number of horrible emergencies yeah. that happen every year. You know, it, which it, seems to be the case. This is not actually out of kit. It's, it's being covered more, but there there are this many crashes absolutely. every year. And, and frankly, I think, but for the cinematically large black plume of smoke that mm -hmm. was suspended over the event, the fact that the that plume of smoke mirrored what just happened in a major motion picture just filmed in that before. area <laughs> filmed in the exact same place with extras from that town we might not have been paying mm -hmm. attention to this story at all and in fact it took a number over a week for the media to start paying attention to it largely because of the urging of some independent journalists like the folks over at the lever David Sirota etc who've been putting a lot of pressure on the um, on people to judge and on the on the White House despite there being a lot of pushback um, so the narrative that we've gotten this entire time is well what do you expect Pete to do this is you know a lot of uh, Biden um, friendly or affiliated people have been saying that there is a disproportionate criticism that's happening here, that this isn't really something in their purview and that they didn't have any control. But suddenly, after some weeks of pressure, they've started to change some rules. So now there is going to be this uh, lifting of a maximum fine. Are you curious, Robbie, what the maximum fine up until this point has been I for railroad curious. companies? A mere $200,025 mm. uh, cap. So that's a, a cap. Fine, that's a fine for breaking a... Regulation. I, I'd also be curious to know what I've been looking and, and have not been able to find exactly what the the liability shield might be. I assume they have a maximum yeah. for civil action. Sure. So, but, but consider this: this is an industry. This is a, the railroad company. Nor, uh, the uh, the railroad company involved here had a revenue of at least twelve point seven billion dollars last year, and we're expecting a fine of a little over two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars to have an effect on their behavior as they transport highly hazardous materials across the country. Mm -hmm. And I have a follow-up question. They are raising the cap. Are they going to get rid of the cap? Why does there exist? If you are engaging in behavior that could potentially cause enough wide, widespread destruction, that it costs enough to the public, that it might put you out of business, is that a case for you not being able to do that at all. Well, and, Why can't the markets decide, on, frankly, whether or not sure, this is an no, efficient Sure. No, I agree with that. And on the liability front, um, so there's been some debate over whether FEMA should become involved. Mm. And actually, one of the arguments, um, according to, I mean, you know, make of this what you will, but uh, Republican officials who have been involved in this, Senator J.D. Vance, Republican Governor Mike DeWine, ha have sounded um, concerned about if FEMA comes in, then a, they're, they're worried that actually shields the liability of the railroad, mm. because then this becomes a federal issue where then the federal government is really responsible for cleanup and fixing things when it should be the railroad is the one who should pay. So yeah, they that's some interesting. Yeah, they absolutely should. Now, another thing, you know, in the context of the administration can't do anything, our hands are tied. Uh, David Sirota over the lever pointed out that despite claims that they are constrained and have no power to do something after two weeks of massive pressure, they've also, uh, the, the Department of Transportation is also developing a notice of proposed rulemaking that will require railroads to provide real time information on the contents of tank cars to authorized emergency response officials responding to or investigating an incident. So part of what happened was there was a lot of confusion about what was even in the cars and how to handle the, what they call them bomb trains because they have so much potentially ex explosive reactive material in them that it's like a bomb on track. So when something like this happens, knowing quickly what is on the cars and how best to handle them is essential for emergency operators. And now we're having this conversation about whether or not this controlled release was in fact the best way to handle this situation and whether or not having more transparency and more information would have helped here. Mm.
Well, Tulsi Gabbard has weighed in on the situation. She tweeted, no surprise, Norfolk Southern and Biden administration don't care about the catastrophe in Ohio. If they did, they'd have taken preventative action despite windfall profits for Norfolk Southern and $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill for Buttigieg. They have done nothing to protect our communities with over 1,000 derailments in one year. Exactly the point you were just making. And she said this on Fox News. Ask the Biden administration, hey, you knew Pete Buttigieg said, oh, well, there's a thousand trains that derail every year. If you know that, what are you doing about it? What could you have done to potentially prevent this absolute catastrophe, putting the lives of these families, their loved ones, their kids, their, their pets, their animals uh, at risk here? Uh, and that's really the question that we need to ask of those who are responsible. They're so arrogant. They think that they're special. They're above the law. They're above reproach. They're above accountability. They clearly don't care about us. They think they can get away with anything. We have to demand more. We have to demand this accountability. We have to demand that those who are in these positions are actually doing their job to take care of the American people. And a new piece in The Federalist asks, why is Pete Buttigieg allowed to keep failing upward? Uh, I mean, this is a valid question. Obviously, it's not the main thrust of the story. But is this going to derail <laughs> the uh, uh, presidential aspirations of Secretary Mayor Pete Buttigieg? Yeah, I mean, when he was first appointed, there was uh, reporting that he would pre have preferred another position. I think he wanted an ambassador position. Um, and that. This this was a kind this requires of a, actual work. Well, <laughs> the and look, maybe, not to not to you know uh, the smear our hardworking ambassadors, but, 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 but also maybe he had some self awareness that he wasn't actually no. particularly prepared for this job. I mean, even when he was running for president, there were accusations that he wasn't prepared for that because he had been the mayor of a very small town. Um, yeah. In a way that didn't really set him up for, for running an entire country, much less the Department of, of, of Transportation. Um, but the thinking was he and a number of other candidates in the 2020 race stepped out um, and cleared the path for Biden. There was clearly not enough votes for a divided, uh, moderate lane unless they all coalesced around one candidate to you know defeat the progressive uh, Bernie Sanders. And so they needed to all be rewarded for having taken the DP Buttigieg being the strongest of those candidates. He merited a special reward. So there would be there's a lot of irony in the idea that him being given this gift of a cabinet position is ultimately what leads to his political downfall. However, given the way the world works, I wouldn't be surprised if People continue to push us under the rug. His um, commsswoman, Liz Smith, has been pushing back a great deal against some of the reporting that's been coming out of the lever and the accusations that Buttigieg and the Biden administration more generally should have known, um, should have been paying more attention. If there were if there were a thousand train derailments over the last year, why hasn't there been a conversation before this about reversing the break rules uh, um, under Trump that got rid of or, or pre prevented implementation of the higher quality breaks that would allow the train to stop uh, more precisely on a dime instead of jackknifing and causing derailments like the ones that we're talking about now. I mean, you can't have it both ways. Apparently, that's not a very important agenda item. And when you're a World Economic Forum young fellow, uh, <laughs> he was a young global leader who was part of that. He worked for McKinsey. Uh, yep. We're not quite sure what he was doing there. There's well, we knew a little bit about the, the bread fixing scandal. Remember, one of, one of the New York Times' most glowing moments, in my view, over the last few years were the candidate interviews that they did back in 2020. And um, one of the journalists there asked Pete Buttigieg a series of pretty pointed questions about uh, McKinsey and Pete Buttigieg's involvement in a, in a, bre a bread price fixing scandal, I believe, in Canada. And the look on his face is priceless. I strongly recommend those who haven't watched that <laughs> video to go back and watch it. But look, I, I, there's if, if it weren't for the fact that he was so doggedly pursuing power and political clout, seemingly from the time he was a very young man straight out of college, I might have some sympathy for him being put in this position where that was kind of like designed to fail. But of course, he he courted this. And frankly, my sympathies cannot be divided. I have, you know, there's no reserve of sympathy when there's so much tragedy that's befalling the people of, of this community in East Palestine and all of the untold trail disasters across the country. Mm, right, and, and several, yeah, yeah, things going wrong with several different kinds of transportation. I, I was already dissatisfied him, with, with him, given uh, the uh, tremendous breakdown we had in uh, in air travel. Yes, even the before Southwest this. debacle. And again, by the way, that's a very similar story. Where Southwest, instead of 
using its profits to invest in its own booking mechanisms and updating its equipment from like the 1970s or 80s. Instead, use that money to pay shareholders and do stock buybacks. And who pays the cost? The consumer over and over again. And we are given paltry crumbs to try to make up for the fact that we miss our holidays, miss our families, or maybe are never re reunited with them at all. We give, them a massive, we, are, we give the industry a massive bailout every time there's a slightest uh, things going wrong. And do they use that money to make things right now? A hundred percent. So I'm, I'm so excited about the pressure that's coming from some parts of the media um, on the Biden administration and on Buttigieg, I'm so heartened to see that Fox News and Tulsi Gabbard and the like are really keeping up the pressure here. What I hope, though, is that that's converted into a constructive criticism of some of the systemic pressures here, because it's not just Pete Buttigieg, and it's not just a Democrat issue. These are rules that came into place under both the Trump administration and the Biden administration are being carried forward by the I'm sorry, the Trump administration, the Obama administration are being carried forward by the Biden administration. And until we start, stop party punching and start actually engaging with why the, there are these regulatory failures, we're going to have another thousand derailments in the coming year. If your train explodes, you have to pay for the cost and you have to make things right with the people it's affected. I yeah. think everyone can agree on that. We will have more rising in just a minute. Please stay tuned.